Welcome. We're here with you once again, and I've been away, but actually not away. Um, we are in the process of um, looking at Father Mark as um, being someone who could take this spot um, as I approach my 69th birthday. So um, we're hoping that you are liking him and enjoying um, his time with you. But I'm back just for a couple of weeks, and um, we'll begin today in this fifth week of the Easter season, Monday. And let us open up first with prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, help us to seek the value that will bring us eternal joy in this changing world. In our desire for what you promise, make us one in mind and heart. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Today we're going to be looking at the Acts of the Apostles. And actually, if you've been going to daily Mass, you'll find that um, the Acts of the Apostles have been a regular part of the ongoing literature read um, for us at the Masses since Easter. And today, during this Easter season, we trace the steady expansion of the post-resurrection faith and also church. On the first missionary journey in, 440, uh, in 44 to, and to 49, Paul and Barnabas preached Jesus Christ in three nearby towns of Asia Minor, Iconium, Lystra, and also Derby. And it is difficult work because of the opposition and because of the ignorant uh, superstition of the people, which was very strong in those days. So listen carefully um, as uh, Cheryl reads for us uh, the scripture today, Acts of the Apostles, chapter 14, verses, verses 5 to 18. There was an attempt in Iconium by both the Gentiles and the Jews together with their leaders to attack and stone Paul and Barnabas. They realized it and fled to the Lyconian cities of Lystra and Derbe and to the surrounding countryside where they continued to proclaim the good news. At Lystra, there was a crippled man lame from birth who had never walked. He listened to Paul speaking, who looked intently at him, saw that he had the faith to be healed and called out in a loud voice, Stand up straight on your feet. He jumped up and began to walk about. When the crowd saw what Paul had done, they cried out in Lyconian, The gods have come down to us in human form. They called Barnabas Zeus and Paul Hermes because he was the chief speaker. And the priest of Zeus, whose temple was at the entrance to the city, brought oxen and garlands to the gates, for he together with the people intended to offer sacrifice. The apostles Barnabas and Paul tore their garments when they heard this and rushed out into the crowd shouting, Men, why are you doing this? We are of the same nature as you, human beings. We proclaim to you good news that you should turn from these idols to the living God who made heaven and earth and sea and all that is in them. In past generations, he allowed all Gentiles to go their own ways. Yet in bestowing his goodness, he did not leave himself without witness. For he gave you rains from heaven and fruitful seasons and filled you with nourishment and gladness for your hearts. Even with these words, they scarcely restrained the crowds from offering sacrifice to them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We have to look back and uh, find uh, what happened, you know, after the Holy Spirit had come to the apostles. The first event was um, an uh, event by which Peter heals a man who's sitting at the gate of the temple and says to him when the man is begging, well, there, there's nothing I can give you, only what I have to offer. And then he said, stand up and in the name of Jesus, um, I command you to stand up. And so he did. And so we have to see even in today then that not only does healing come from the um, direct apostles who saw and experienced Jesus as he lived. But now today, we, we have it coming um, once again to us. And, um, and it's from Paul, 
And Paul really never saw Jesus, but what we note is that Cha Paul had an ex personal experience with Jesus. As um, he is riding along and all as he's doing, he's condemning all of those new Christians to death. So it's an encounter with Jesus that makes all the difference in the world. It's not that one just see Jesus. So it then points to us in our particular life generation. We don't have to see Jesus. It's really what is important, and that is belief. Noticing in the reading today that Paul noticed that the man had great belief, and so that's why Paul yelled out, stand up. Um, so you and I have to have faith. And when we have faith in Jesus Christ, then Jesus Christ can work through us with the power of the Holy Spirit. But if there's no faith at all, then we wonder um, why God isn't working in our lives. But God works when there is faith. And he works not only on our behalf, but on behalf of others who are in the process of searching or wondering who is this Jesus of Nazareth and why did he come? And we begin to see that the real point of Jesus' coming um, is a means by which to help us realize that God loves us really beyond our understanding. And we, you and I, are called to be forgivers, forgivers of God, in the name of God, to those who have sinned against God. This opens the door to receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So um, in our process today of listening, uh, I know, Cheryl, you have mm -hmm. um, uh, taught in the RCIA program at Holy Spirit, and I'm sure that you discover in those individuals coming to the church, um, this idea of wanting more information that helps them to um, be or feel secure mm -hmm. in a gift of faith that they're, they, they have received, but maybe hasn't been nurtured. Right. And not only nurtured, but also sometimes connecting the dots that what that call to faith really was a call from God himself. And they're thinking that sometimes it's something that's happening internally within them and it's all about them. But it's really God placing that call in their hearts and now they are responding by the gift of faith. And where that response and where that cooperation and that willingness to go on that journey of faith, where it will take them, now they get really excited. And it's inter so mm -hmm. interesting because um, I've been working in the RCIA2 program. Mm -hmm. And what I noticed is that um, when people have gone from the inquiry in, into the second level, um, they become more excited because their, their faith is growing, their maturity in mm -hmm. faith is being seen by us who work with them each week. But at the same time, um, they are growing and realizing the gift that they have is not for themselves. Exactly. It's a gift for others. And all of us have to realize the faith that we have received is a real gift, not only for ourselves, but it is a gift for others mm -hmm. who come into our lives and who we can give witness to by our words, um, but especially in our deeds. So taking an opportunity to look here in the scriptures today, we find not only words of Paul, but we also find deeds of mm -hmm. Paul. And as these words and deeds spread through the community present to him, that community began to grow with others. Bye-bye. Yes. Bye. -bye. Bye.